Hey guys, I am really excited about today's video. Today we're going to look at what things should you be looking out for or listening out for when you're buying a new vocal mic. Now a few days ago I sat and I recorded through all of the vocal mics that I own and I compared all the audio against each other and I have made a recommendation of five things that I think you should listen out for when you're choosing a vocal mic and I'm also going to give you my top three vocal mics. Now these are just from the ones that I have, these are just what I had on hand. There's no real decision making process in any of these microphones, it just happened to be what I had. I'm going to upload all of the recordings that I made to YouTube as a video on their own so you can just go and listen to all of the mics back to back and make your own decisions listen to the things that you want to listen to in them. Uh, it's all up there for you to go and have a look at as well and I'll put a link to that um, in this video. So go and do that if you want to check that one out as well. So there are other vocal mics, there's loads of vocal mics out there. There are other ones that you might want to go and consider and look at. But these were just what I had and these are my thoughts on these microphones. So let's go and take a look at these mics. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm gonna take you through five things that I think you need to look out for when you're choosing a vocal mic. And I've got some examples of some of the videos that I've recorded so I can show you these and you can hopefully hear them. And the first example I want to show you is gonna be breath sounds or breath noise, sometimes we might call this. And this is when the vocal mic is up towards somebody's mouth and you can hear them breathing. So let's have an example of this. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Okay, so clearly very breathy, lots of breath noise in there. Um, now this is something that generally can be fairly easily fixed. You can see here in this video that I'm singing into the microphone fairly straight on. Um, and that's when the breath noise is gonna be at its worst because you're breathing straight into the mic capsule. And one of the easiest ways to fix breath noise actually is just to rotate the microphone. And if you sing into a microphone more across the top, then most of those breath noises are just gonna go straight across the top of the microphone and very little of it is gonna go down into the capsule, but you'll still capture some of that sound. So um, just a small rotation of the microphone can sometimes help to fix this. So breath noise isn't necessarily the worst thing that you can have on a microphone, it is fixable. But it is something worth just thinking about and how bad is that breath noise. And I would say this OM3 was particularly bad for breath noise. It was There was a lot of it there. And if it's a very big problem, um, then maybe it's something that you want to avoid. But a little bit of breath noise is fixable. So don't worry too much about that if it's just a small amount. Okay, so we move on again. And this time the second point that I want to raise is about microphone tone. And when we talk about the tone of a microphone, what we're talking about is uh, maybe the sound, sound is being colored slightly by the sound of the microphone. So it might be a slightly muddy sound or a very bright sound. Um, again, I've got some audio examples, so let's just have a listen to these for a second. And death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. Okay, so first of all, we've got the Sennheiser E865. And this microphone I found to be quite dull and muddy sounding. And another example. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. So this time we've got the Shaw SM57. Now this mic technically isn't really a vocal mic, but it is something that a lot of people will use, and I have seen people use this as a vocal mic in the past. Um, but this mic I found to be very harsh and very bright, and um, yeah, the kind of the opposite, the other end, not muddy and dull, but harsh and bright. Really, this microphone works great for things like snare drums and even guitar cabs, where you might want some of that kind of brightness, that crispness. Um, but as a vocal mic, I just found it to be overly bright, really. 
And those are the two extremes that we might see when we're talking about tone, dull and muddy or bright and harsh and, and overly crisp. But the one thing about tone with a microphone is that what sounds dull and muddy on one person's voice might actually work quite well on another person because everybody's voice is slightly different. Our voices are generated by uh, our lung capacity and the, the shape of our throat and our voice boxes and our mouths and obviously everybody's Dip body is slightly different, so therefore the sound that we create is slightly different. So a microphone that colours one person's voice in a particular way might actually complement another person's voice. So it's very difficult to say this is good and this is bad, they're just different and they're going to work differently for different people's voices. Okay, so we move on again and this time the third point that we're going to look at is going to be handling noise. Now handling noise is when you have a microphone and particularly if you're hand holding this microphone anytime somebody starts moving their hand around if they they move the microphone in their hand some microphones will pick that noise up and you'll get this kind of rumbling sound that will come through the PA system. Now this microphone I found to be the worst microphone for handheld noise. Now, unfortunately, I didn't actually capture any of it on the recording, um, but it was very definitely there. I had my headphones in at the time and I could hear it before I started the recording. I could hear it in my headphones, so I know it would definitely come through the PA system. Um, but when I started the recording, I actually then held my hand fairly still, so there was none of it there. So this microphone, the Sontronic Solo, I found to be really bad for handling noise. And the other disadvantage to this microphone is it's really big. I don't know if you can see this. Let me just get another example. So this is the Sennheiser E840. And if I hold these two up side by side, you, you should be able to see there the difference in the size of these two microphones. The Sontronics really is a very thick mic. I'd say it's at least one and a half times the thickness of, uh, of most other microphones. So it's actually not all that comfortable to hold, which means the likelihood is that if your singers are holding this, they are going to want to move it around because it just doesn't feel natural in your hand. And so that's also going to add to that handling noise if it's just not comfortable to hold. But you might say, well, we have all our singers have them in a stand, so nobody's holding them, so that's not going to be a problem for us, right? Well, not necessarily, because handling noise also transfers through to foot noise for people who are moving around the stage. So if you've got this on a stand, any vibrations that work their way up the stand will also generate the same kind of noise in the microphone as well. So a microphone like this actually probably is going to be really noisy on stage. Um, I can't say I was a big fan of this one particularly. Okay, so let's move on again. This time we're going to come to plosives or popping peas, sometimes you might call them. Uh, and this is where much like with the breath noise, when somebody's got the microphone up into their face uh, and they say anything with a P sound, the power of God, um, that P sound will, will make a popping noise that will come through the PA system. Again, I've got an audio example, so let's just listen to this. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. Okay, so the praise of your glory there, that big P sound, and it really popped as we heard that there. So often popping peas, the plosive sounds, are caused when you've got a microphone with a flattish grill on the top. When you sing into a flat grill like this, the air that hits the front of this is less able to dissipate over the, the grill, and so what happens is you get a fairly um, high level of air pressure hitting that front of that microphone um, and that's what causes those popping peas. So anytime you've got a microphone with a flat grill on the top you're more likely to get popping peas happening on that. But the good news is, much like with breath noise, it's relatively easily fixable. Um, again, just ro rotating the microphone, so rather than blowing straight into the microphone, that air pressure is just going to dissipate over the top a bit more. That will really help. But also, 
EQing, you can solve this fairly easily with a bit of EQing. Removing the low frequencies or reducing the low frequencies will be a big help in reducing those popping P sounds. So again, it's not the worst thing that you can have in a microphone, just depending on how bad it is, um, but it is fixable. So it's worth knowing about, but it's not necessarily completely critical. Okay, so that brings us on to our fifth and final point, which is going to be costs. So cost is something that you're going to have to consider. Cost is something that's going to be part of your decision-making process. But the thing with costs is you don't necessarily get what you pay for. Now, by far, the best microphone that I tried was this one, the Audio-Technica AE5400. Now, AE stands for Artist Elite. This is their top-of-the-line microphone range. Um, let's just have a listen to this one for a second. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Okay, so there's a little bit of plosives there, a little bit of those popping peas, but that would be really easy to fix that with a bit of EQing. We could sort that problem, no problem. And the, the Just the quality, the clarity, the detail of this microphone is incredible. It's a brilliant microphone, 100% recommend it. But if we look at the price, this is a £369 microphone. It is the most expensive one that I reviewed out of all of them, again, by quite a considerable distance. So you'd expect it to be a very good microphone. However, if we jump to the opposite end, uh, the cheapest microphone that I reviewed was the Lewitt MTP250DM. This is a, just a very bog-standard basic microphone. And I think this microphone costs something like 60, 65 quid, so it's pretty cheap. Um, but I did find that it didn't do a very good job, really. This was one of the worst microphones that I tried. But if we just step up just slightly in cost, the next microphone up was this one, which is the AKG D5. And this is about 70 quid, so just a slight jump up, second cheapest microphone of the lot. And this one actually was a pretty reasonable microphone. Again, let's just have a listen. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Okay, so a very reasonable microphone, and for just 70 quid, um, I thought this was a really good example of when price doesn't necessarily need to be the determining factor. More expensive isn't necessarily always better. There are some really good, cheap budget microphones that you can use. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it has a few uh, imperfections there, breath noise, plosives. We heard all those things going on, but as I've already said, they're easily fixable. And it wasn't the most crisp or detailed sound. There were definitely some better sounding microphones. But for 70 quid, I thought it was fantastic. So price is going to be a factor, but it's not necessarily that you get what you pay for. Yes, it will improve as you go up in quality, but there are some good cheap microphones too. Okay, so those were my five things to consider when you are choosing a microphone. But just before we finish up, I wanted to round off this video by making three recommendations. Of all these microphones that I reviewed, there were three that stood out to me in three different price categories that I just thought these three microphones were fantastic and I'd really like to recommend them to you. So first of all, we have our best on a budget microphone. And there's no surprises what this one's going to be. This one was, of course, the AKG D5. This was the microphone we were just talking about a second ago, 70 quid microphone. For 70 quid, I do not think you can go wrong with this microphone. I thought it did a really good job. Second cheapest one out of the lot that we tried, but for 70 quid, absolutely brilliant. So if you're looking for a budget microphone, 
AKG D5 is definitely the one that I'd recommend. So now we come to our best mid-priced microphone and that's going to be this one. It's the Sennheiser E840. This microphone I thought was a really good all-rounder. It was a good, solid, mid-priced microphone. I thought it just did a fantastic job. It was just nice and round. It had enough detail and clarity to it um, without any of the other issues in there. It's just a kind of no-fuss, mid-priced microphone. So anybody looking for a good workhorse microphone that's just gonna do a bit of everything for you, E840 I thought was fantastic. And finally, we're gonna to come to our best top-end microphone. Now, I would have absolutely no problems in recommending those Audio-Technica Artist Elite Series microphones. That was absolutely fantastic, and by all rights, it probably should take this top spot. It was the best microphone out of all of them by a long, long way. But as I already said, it was also the most expensive out of all of them by a long, long way, and so therefore you kind of expect it to be pretty, pretty good. And at 370 quid, I think it was, it's probably out of reach of most church budgets. It's not a typical church microphone. It is definitely a high-end microphone. So I'm actually gonna give this award instead to the Audio-Technica ATM 710. This microphone, I've always loved this microphone, I think it's fantastic. It's a condenser microphone and it definitely has that upper end sound to it. It's got loads of clarity, loads of detail. I would say it's very comparable to the Artist Elite microphone, not quite as good, but it's, it's up there. It actually wasn't the most expensive one we reviewed. There was the Artist Elite one at the very top and then below that was the Sennheiser and then below that was the Audio Technica. So it was a few steps down from the top, but actually I thought it sounded loads better than the Sennheiser. So anybody who's looking for something with that bit more quality to it, the ATM 710 is a great option. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining me again today. I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, those things to look out for when you're choosing your next microphone. If you've got any questions about any of that, then please get in touch or leave them in the comments. And why don't you go ahead and tell me what your favorite vocal mic is. It'll be great to know what people are using. But that's it for today, so take care and I will see you in the next video.